that clause one stand part. Those yeah. Thank you, Mr Chair. Well the Minister just yelled something out to me and I felt I needed to, to respond. Is this a which point was, of order? No, 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 this is a call. Oh, Moana This is Mackie. a call. Thank you. The, which I needed to respond, where he basically washed his hands of this. Point, point of order, Chris Tremaine. Speaking uh, to, the, to, this, to the Chair, uh, you're already, the call had already been made, sir, and I, I asked... I'm, that... I'm the sole discretion of that. I've called Moana Mackie. I thank the senior government whip for trying to shut me down on this very important issue that's clearly causing the government embarrassment. Clearly causing embarrassment. That's right, that's true. Well, I mean, I, the, the Minister for CRIs has just washed his hands of it. I mean, this is a man who's meant to be in charge of the organisation that is going to be given this huge increase in workload. This huge increase in workload. What? Oh, for God's sake. Oh. If you just listen, Mr Bridges, instead of sitting up there and chipping away constantly and never actually listening to anyone other, other than your own voice, then you might listen. The minister interjected across the house to me that, oh, well, this is just going to be on contract, so it doesn't matter. Well, I would like the minister to take a call because the people who work at ESR are concerned about this. This is going to be a long-term increase in their workload. This isn't going to be something. So will the minister guarantee that within that contract for ESR, for this increase in workload, that they will get the funding that, we, that the select committee was told they would need, but not just that, that it will go beyond just the testing of the samples to the chain of custody, the administration. I know the government doesn't like talking about administration because it's bureaucrats, it's not frontline staff, but it cannot work if the administration will. Then why doesn't the minister get up and take a call? Rather than just sitting there like a dried arrangement, why doesn't he get up and take a call and actually speak on his portfolio area of responsibility? I mean, I know he didn't want the job. I know he didn't like it. He, kept going, he keeps going out to the CRI community and telling them that he never wanted the job, which doesn't exactly instil confidence in your new minister. I, and, I, and I know that he was, I know he was trying to lower expectations considerably, and on that minister I say, job well done. But he might actually want to get up in the House and answer this, because I'm not trying to be difficult, Minister, and I'm not trying to be argumentative or problematic. I've worked for this Crown Research Institute, and I've worked for other areas, and I know how often it's the chain of custody and the administration side which doesn't get picked up. And, we heard the, the chair of the committee say, well, ESR has a great chain of custody. It should be called the cr criminal bodily samples pay them properly bill. Does that make the government whip happy? So and the, the, the chair of the committee got up and said, well, well, ESR already have a great chain of custody process. Well, that said to me that actually they weren't going to get any more money for doing that. And I'm sure the minister will agree, because he's been around and he's had a look. That's one of the most important parts. You don't have any integrity in the entire process if you're not absolutely 100 per cent sure that from the moment that sample is taken, from the moment it's then transported, it arrives at ESR, it's logged in, it's either stored because it's not going to be tested yet, goes then through the laboratory process, it's then analysed, there's a person who does the data analysis of it, those results are then logged back against that person, that then those samples are stored, whether it be the DNA data sample or the DNA physical sample, that all that is going to be properly funded and is not going to be expected to come out of the baseline of ESR. When, given that that minister there is now expecting them to pay a dividend to government to pay for private school increases in funding rather than going back into science, the, the CRIs are under financial pressure, and I'm sure that the minister would acknowledge that. And I don't think, I don't think that it is too much to ask for the minister in charge of it, who sat there the entire time I've been talking, chipping away, but won't get up and actually take a call in his portfolio area to say to ESR and to say to this House, yes, that funding will be there. We will make sure that the contract includes all this extra area. I don't know why this is such a difficult thing. If he doesn't want to be the minister, then give it to someone who does want to be the minister. That's all I would say about it. Three out of ten. Well, and if the minister doesn't want to do it, then don't do it. But step aside, give the job to someone like Paul Hutchison. Paul Hutchison, who understands how the CRI 
for Ice Sector Works, who worked really hard with them and who knows the importance of funding the administration of sample collection and sample chain of custody care. And well, get up and take a call, Minister. Get up and take a call. And Mr Chair, I'm happy to sit down now so that the Minister for Research, Science and Technology and Crown Research Institutes can stand up and give us the guarantee the House needs that this bill will be properly funded so we don't run the risk of any kinds of miscarriages of justice. Mr Chairman. Mr. Chairman.